But now, if I go ahead and put my $2 into the same place, and I leave the barrel, it will buy a bowl. Hello, this is Spider Rock, and welcome to MC Money, my new add-on that adds in an economy to Minecraft Bedrock for both single player and multiplayer, and it works well uh, with both. I have a lot to cover in this add-on, but I'm really excited to show you all everything that I have here because this is, I, I've had a lot of fun working on this add-on, and I do think it's one of the best things that I've made. Before we do get started, I do want to shout out Darren Cox and Royal Jelly for becoming channel members, so thank you so much for the support, as well as Pingy, who's perpetually a very high level member, so uh, thank all of you. Anyway, the most important thing about this add-on is the currency itself. You've got money, it's in dollars here, uh, you can call it whatever you want, I don't know, I just have it dollars, but uh, you've got basic coins, quadra coins, dollar notes, and stack notes. So these are basically what they look like, $1, $4, $16, and $64, and in a crafting table you can combine them four basic coins to a quadra coin four quadra coins to a dollar note and then four dollar notes to a stack note and then you can convert them all back although converting them all back does convert them into basic coins and then you can go ahead and convert them back to whatever you want them to be in so i have them all back in 64 of each of their type of thing so the biggest thing with this add-on i think my my favorite thing about it is player shops this is mainly made for multiplayer, but this allows players to make their own shops and sell their own items for whatever price they want to other players without other players being able to interfere with them. So right here you can see I have a player shop, that's what this item is, and all of this is craftable in survival as you can see if I scroll down here, well you can't actually see it. I went ahead and threw down a crafting table so you can see there are crafting recipes for all of these things. So for the player shops, once you craft them, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do like a little tutorial for all of these things as well so you can reference them if you wanna add this to a world. For player shop, you throw it down, it gives you an outline of how much space it's going to take up. So right now you can see this is what it's going to look like theoretically, it'll look something like that and then this is the actual outline of where it's gonna go. You can also rotate it by standing on top of it, holding out a shop wrench which you can craft and then interacting it takes a second, but it uh, will rotate. And then if you want to rotate it back, you can just break it and place it back down. Uh, and then in order to place it down, you actually interact on this block itself, this little hitbox down here. There we go, now we have this player shop that spawned in. You can spawn them in both rotations. Now you can see there's bedrock here. This is normally wh where people will be buying things from, but for now, uh, there's nothing there. You also can't lock it. So since I made the shop, I'm the one that's gonna get to set everything up. So going down here, I can set everything I need to set. I'm gonna set my price here. To, uh, I'll say two basic coins, two dollars, uh, and then you remove this little dirt block. This is remove after setting price. So whatever this is, it's going to cost two dollars. Then I can set my lock. So the lock is very important. The lock is how you actually make sure that nobody else can get into your shop and steal your stuff and your money. So you can set the lock to any block or any block with anything in it. So I'll, for example, I'm going to set mine as a furnace with three iron nuggets in this. So I can lock my shop and it can only be entered if I have a furnace with three iron nuggets. And I'll get to that in a second. Going down here in this dropper, you can set the items that you want to sell. So I'm going to be selling bowls. So for $2, as you can see up here, I'm gonna be set selling one bowl. Then if we go down here where it says interact to exit, that will take us out of the shop. Also in this barrel is where our, all of our uh, earnings are gonna collect. When people buy things, they'll end up in this barrel. But I'm gonna interact to exit, and then you just interact with this little lock block to, uh, to close up your shop. And now you can't get back in unless you unlock it, which I'll show in a second. But now if I go ahead and put my $2 into the same place in this barrel, so generally you'll wanna do things in the top left, you can go through and I leave the barrel, it will buy a bowl. And uh, so I can buy, I'm gonna, I'm gonna buy three bowls, okay? So I should have $6 down there. I'm spending $6 and uh, in exchange, I'm getting three bowls. So as you can see now, I've purchased all three of my bowls. Let's say I want to get back in. So I'm going to want to put a furnace down facing this direction and it's going to have three iron nuggets. And there, as you can see now, it just opens up. But if I take out the iron nuggets, for example, I can lock it up and you can't actually get in. Also, if you break this block, it should be replaced, which is a, a handy feature. It just goes back to where it was, so you don't have to worry about that. But let's put my three iron nuggets back, get back into here. And you can see that if I go into here, I have these three bowls that I purchased from this. So the bowls are out. And then if I go down to my earnings, my profits, I have my $6. So I'm going to take my $6 back and then uh, I'm going to just take this out. And I don't have a pickaxe or else I would lock that up. Actually, I do want to show something. Um, if you run out of stock in your shop. So let's say I go in here and oh no, my shop is out of bowls. Well, your uh, your barrel will be replaced with this this 
bedrock block, so now people can't accidentally buy things when there's nothing left to buy. Then if you want to get rid of your shop, all you have to do is destroy uh, this block here. I think there might be, you can destroy the dropper as well. Um, or the dis yeah, the dropper. But I'm going to destroy this block and it will remove my entire shop. And as you can see at the bottom, I get most of my blocks back, as well as I get all of my money back, I get my bulls back. I think it does destroy your key block, so you'll probably want to destroy that um, before, like it gets rid of it, so you'll want to get rid of that first. And if you go up here, you can see all that's left is my furnace, and it created this big hole where everything was. Now I want to show you some of the other things you can do with money, and ways that you can get money and spend it, even if you're in survival. So, for obtaining money, one of the, I think the most important way, uh, is to put things into your depositor. This block right here is a depositor, it's a craftable block, you can uh, put pretty much, not anything, but you can put a lot of things into a depositor to sell them. For example, slime balls, diamonds, and amethyst shards are three of the things you can put in there. I think there's like 80 something, maybe 90 something different types of item and block that you can put into a depositor. On screen right now, I'm going to go ahead and put a little uh, image that has all of the different things that you can put into a depositor to sell and all of the um, amounts of money that you can uh, get them for. So if you want, you can pause it, take a screenshot, something like that. Anyway, I'm going to go ahead and throw some of these things in the depositor. So I'm going to put my slime balls in the depositor, put my diamonds in the depositor, and my amethyst shards in the depositor. As you can see, I got some got some coins and got some money. And now, money storage. So as you can see, if I open my menu, there's a little thing up here that says savings balance. And it has $8 in here. I guess that's what I've already had mine in this world. There we go. I've gone ahead and brought it back down to zero. So you're going to want to craft an ATM. It's a craftable block. You can craft this is what it looks like. And it has the ATM thing on all faces in case you want to like put it in your floor or something. Um, but what you do with an ATM, as you can see, nothing happens when I interact with it. You actually interact with it with all of your money. So if I want to put my base coins in here, I can. The easier way, a quicker way would probably just to be to turn all of my basic coins into a uh, into quadra coins and the quadra coins into dollar notes and the dollar notes into stack notes. This is more than likely the quickest way to do this. So you can see I can just throw in all of my money into here. You just interact. You can even, I have an auto clicker that will go through them really quickly. I like an auto right click thing. Um, but yeah, you just throw all of the money that you have into the ATM. And now if I go to my savings balance, that way you don't have to store your money physically. You can actually have it in the ATM. You can see I have $4,480 up here in my savings balance. Then I take my ATM card and I just interact with it. And so it takes it out at $64 a time um, until you can't, you don't have enough money left to take it out at $64 a time. I pro probably put way too much money into here. But once you have less than 64, it'll go down to 16, and then less than 16, it goes down to 4, and so on and so forth. Now you may be thinking, why why craft, why spend resources on crafting an ATM? Why can't I just put all my money in a chest? Well, if you have money in your bank account in the savings balance, every Minecraft in-game day, it will be multiplied by... I don't remember the exact percentage, I think it's like half a percent or something like that, but you will gain interest, meaning every day that passes, you'll have a little bit more money and the amount of money you gain every day is more if you have more money in your bank account. So after say 100 days, I could have like $6,000 in here even if I didn't put anything into there. So if you get a bunch of money, you wanna keep it all in here because then you're making like $100 a day off of it and then you know you can kind of profit. So the next feature is uh, another way that you can get money is from mining Gildum. So I'm gonna grab a pickaxe and we'll get to this raw Gildum stuff in a second. I'm gonna hop into creative for just a second so I can get to where I need to go. You see I have this little thing I went into spectator to find some of it. Towards the bottom of your world, you'll find a decently rare, not extremely rare, but decently rare ore called Gildum. And Gildum is probably exactly what you're thinking it is. It's an ore that you can mine. That, that's what the money is made out of. Money is made out of Gildum. It would be made out of other things, but other things are farmable and I can't regulate other things. And now I'm dying. Well, while I'm perishing, you can see there's some Gildum ore around here. It looks like emerald ore, but kind of more yellow. And then I can go ahead and mine it. I mean, you don't need a pickaxe to mine it. It's a custom block. I could make a, a custom pickaxe to mine the custom block, but I don't feel like it. But you can see it spawns. It only spawns, I believe, below like level negative... I want to say like negative 10, something around there, all the way to the bottom of the world. Um, and it's not like super rare, but it's rarer than like iron and gold. Or maybe like similar to like gold. Um redstone or something like that but as you can see i have what is basically nine dollars worth of raw gildum 
But with this, there is a little bit of a catch. You see, you need one of these coin forges to actually turn the raw gildum basically directly into basic coins. You can see it's a, it's got like the mold there and you can throw the money in and it turns into the coins. However, if I go to uh, find myself a coin forge, they are very expensive. They cost a netherite ingot, smithing table, lava bucket, two anvils, and four diamonds. So that's already like six iron blocks. So most people aren't gonna be able to do that. You're probably going to be mining in the deep dark and in like the, the negative coordinates before you actually can be able to afford one of these things. Uh, just to prove it to you that it does work, I'm gonna throw one of them into here. So now what you need to do is you need to throw it into a furnace and putting it into a furnace uh, turns into gildum nuggets because a furnace is less efficient than a coin forge. With these gildum nuggets, you can turn four into one coin. So if you put all of your uh, all of your raw gildum into a furnace, it's going to give you one quarter of the amount of coins. You're much better off putting it into a coin forge. The only problem with a coin forge is just how expensive it is. So if you can afford it, you can be making a lot more money from mining, or as you're not making very much money from mining aside from things that you can deposit if you're just smelting it. So maybe you'd wanna save it until you can afford it, I don't know. Before we get to the last way that we can uh, get money, I just wanted to point out there are four new types of fish um, that you can get just from fishing. Uh, these are all pretty rare, but these are kind of like treasure fish. So you can sell all of these. You can get them from fishing. They are pretty rare. I'm not going to sit here and fish because it would probably take like 20 minutes before I get one of them unless I enchanted my fishing rod. Uh, all of these are depositable. Blue fish are worth four coins, four dollars. Purple fish are worth 16. Blood fish are worth 32 and gilded fish are worth 64. Um, so you can get all of this from fishing. So if you're doing a lot of fishing, um, or you, you just like fishing a lot, you're probably going to be able to make um, at least, you know, probably $64 every hour or two uh, just from fishing, not including, you can sell like regular fish too, which is cool. And then the last way that you can get money, I'm going to have to do a slash time set night is with gilded zombies. These guys are a fairly rare zombie spawn. Um, they will spawn, you know, just in wherever zombies and skeletons and all the monsters spawn except they're they're a lot rarer than other ones and when you spawn them in here let me hold on let me th they, they are more powerful they have much more health a little more health they do a little more damage and they're a little faster than a regular zombie but when you kill them you get i believe anywhere between one and three dollars maybe one and four dollars something like that so i'm going to spawn a few of these guys in and these are a good way to get money if you like going around and fighting mobs so i tried to make sure that there is a way to get money for every type of Player. For those of people that just want to go around PvEing, there is a way you could get money. You can also sell mob loot in the depositor. Uh, it does not sell for much because if you have a big mob farm, I don't want people to be able to like get super, super rich off of just having a big mob farm and inflate the economy and it's all messed up. So these gilded zombies are a fairly rare spawn around. I don't have, uh, it's not dark enough out yet for them to be spawning around. The last thing I wanted to talk about here, the last main feature of this add-on, is the way that you can buy things in single player. You can also use this for multiplayer, but this is made with single player in mind, but I mean, yeah, this works perfectly normal with multiplayer too, and that's merchant shops. They will spawn in these structures. They're decently rare, but not super rare. You'll probably find one of these as often as you'll find a village, I'd say. Um, that's at least what I'm going for. And they will spawn with this block here. You just interact with the block and it spawns in a merchant. Now the merchants will have completely randomized trades, but there are a ton of different things you can buy. So you can see that a diamond normally would cost four dollar notes or you would get, if you sold a diamond, you would get one stack note, which is four dollar notes, which is $64. But now you're paying an extra $32 to purchase them from a merchant. Everything from the merchant is going to be more expensive than you sold it for. This is to prevent people from using loopholes to uh, overinflate the economy and destroy stuff. I know I do that with every economy type thing. So everything's more expensive to buy than it is to sell. But there are almost as many merchant trades as there are things that you can put into the depositor. There's like 70 or 80 something. I don't have a specific list of those. You'll have to find merchants to uh, see what what you want to what you want to trade for and stuff. Um, and you can find these merchants. You can collect them. Like I said, they'll all have different variety of trades. So it will be good, ideally, if you have one of every trade. I think 
you'll probably want there, there's uh, somewhere between 70 and 100 trades i don't remember how many exactly um but you'll want uh eight to ten merchants probably and then you'll have you can have your whole merchant booth but that's assuming everyone has a completely different set of trades so you'll end up probably wanting to have 20 to 30 merchants uh just so you can get every possible thing you can buy but then that allows you to buy pumpkins diamonds redstone dust shulker shells gunpowder really anything you need on demand and then of course you can break them out of these little structures and you can you know put them in a boat or something and take them back to your base i'm going to set the time to midnight for a minute and go into creative to look for uh, another one of these structures it'll light up but also we can see if any of these gilded zombies spawn around they do spawn around a decent bit just not nearly as much as other things it took a little bit but would you look at that i found two um two of these things spawn right next to each other so sometimes that will happen you know their minecraft structures stuff like that happens but let's see what trades we get from these guys so this one we get dirt emerald amethyst shards leather berries carrots logs things like that okay cool and then let's see what we get from this one we got calcite coal name tags vines berries soul sand netherrack ice all kinds of things so ice is i think a really good one that's something that like sometimes maybe if you don't have an ice biome yet but you find a guy that you can buy ice from it's only one dollar for two ice so you can end up getting a decent bit of ice you can make ice highways it will be a little expensive not to you know toot my own horn pat myself in the back whatever but i do think this is the most some of the most mental effort i've put into an add-on in terms of i really have thought this through i think I'll, we'll have to play test and see you'll have to let me know in the comments down below what you think about some of these things but i tried my best to make it so there aren't ways that you can exploit it and i mean i'm sure there will be some ways but you'll have to get really creative and honestly that's what i want to encourage is just people being creative and uh, i don't know entrepreneurial or whatever i also did put a lot of time into making the player shops work um, and i think they work pretty well they work better than i was expecting in all honesty so I'm thinking, let me know also what you think down below. What do you think about a video on just like how I made this add-on, especially the player shops, but also maybe like the uh, interest system and things like that, um, because I did put a lot of time into it and I think it would be very fun to explain because uh, it is, I think, pretty cool. Anyway, of course, you can download this in the description. There will be a link. You won't have to go through ad sites or anything. However, I may do on MCPDL an ad site thing, but then also leave the link to the video so you can just get it in the video description without having to worry about that. Anyway, thanks for watching. If you made it to here, see you later. And goodbye.